Hello everyone, welcome back. I mean, it is summer and I haven't really posted that much yet, so why not? I thought, leading up to The Incredibles 2, I thought I'd rank all the movies. And the first few are going to be pretty obvious why they're the worst. <laughs> but um, this will be a pretty long video, so why not I just get into it. So basically, I own all the movies except four of them. So basically those four will be at the bottom because I obviously didn't care enough to own them. So let's just start with the bottom three because you probably all know what that is. That's the Cars trilogy. People like these movies the least of the Pixar movies, but I'm just going to put all three of them at the bottom. Because I mean, they're all kind of bad in my opinion. Um, but obviously I'll just put the numbers on what is what. So some are better than the others, but yeah, they're all at the bottom. Yes, the Cars trilogy. Now, while the first one was a pretty big step down from their other movies they were re releasing recently, it was still okay. I mean, it had its moments. Cars 2 was garbage. Um, there are some parts I liked in it, though, like the ending, kind of. I thought that was kind of interesting and, you know, entertaining at least, but the rest of it was just trash. It made no sense for them to do that spy garbage. And the third one, Ugh, the third one. I didn't even get the. I didn't even watch the whole thing. That's how bad it was. I just lost interest. The only good part was what they were marketing, which was him crashing that poster. Him crashing. I'm kind of obsessed about posters, so of course I would mention that. But yeah, that that whole series was just garbage. So that's the bottom three. I'll just say that. If you guys care enough, I'll put Cars three. I think is the worst because I didn't even finish the whole movie. It was so bad. Cars two was also pretty bad. So that's a little tier above, and then the first Cars. Okay, now that that trash is out of the way, there's still one more movie I don't have on DVD, and it's not that it's awful, it's this was, you know, forgettable for me. And that was A Bug's Life. I know that's one of their earlier films, and it's a classic and all that, but besides um, Kevin Spacey <laughs> as um, the bad guy, which, I mean, he's basically poisoned now to be in any films, but, I mean, he was he's still a good actor, what from what he's done and all that's debatable and how awful that was but he's still a good actor so he was a good presence in the film <laughs> and the animation for its time was really decent but i don't really remember that much about it i mean i know i watched it growing up and all i mean i watched it recently as well but i st just wasn't nothing special about it okay now that those are out of the way let's get to the ones i do have in dvd Half of these, I don't even know how I got on DVD. I don't even remember getting them. They may have been presents. Who knows? Okay. So we'll start with this one right here. Yeah, um, this one's also near the bottom for me. I mean, it, it felt really unnecessary. This is when they began their trend. Even though they were promoting, we make original films. And there was even that whole thing about how people at Disney were like, you got to stop making um, original films and start making sequels to Bank. And they're like, no, we don't want to do that and all. I don't know what happened to that mentality because that, that got thrown out the window when they started making crap like this. Now, I know everyone would have wanted a sequel. It made the most sense with um, where it left off. There's so many possibilities and all. But no, they made a prequel for some reason. And it was pretty filler. Like, I did not really care at all. And they switched to protagonist, basically. I mean, they're both still the main character, but they made... The Mike, the main character, while in the other one, there was Sully. I mean, that was okay. It's just I really see him as like a lead in material, but whatever. That's yeah. Okay, so for another one, why not? Let's go with the Good Dinosaur. Now, a lot of people hated this movie when it came out, and 2015 was a pretty good year for Pixar because they didn't release anything in 2014, and they were like, okay, let's release two original movies. Let's get back into everyone's mind saying, yes, we still make original properties after making movies of just sequelitis and all that crap. And while it was really entertaining, I thought it was a really enjoyable film. I think it got hated on a bit too much, but in my opinion, it's not really ranked up as high. I mean, I really liked it. I thought it was enjoyable. The animation was just spectacular. My goodness, this was some fantastic animation. Like the woods and all, photorealistic, the water, how they were able to do that was crazy. You know, and then they go for the goofy, kind of animation with the characters, which I found kind of jarring, but I mean, it was still good. I mean, you saw I got this edition. I thought it looked cool because it does that. But yeah, um, it was a really good movie. Not as high, obviously, but still a treat. 
Okay. Let's get to another one that was okay. It was um, Brave. Now, this was probably the most non-Pixar movie I've seen. Like, it's really different from the other ones. It feels like a Disney movie because it's, you know, a Disney princess, but it's Pixar, surprisingly. That's all you need to know. It didn't have that Pixar charm that we usually know and see from all their films. And, I mean, I thought it was... I thought it was good. There were some funny moments. Animation, like, basically throughout all these films, even the bad ones, like the Cars ones, throughout all of them, they're going to have great animation. That's probably the one praise I can give all these films. But yeah, that's basically all I can give here. It did have um, a pretty decent story. So, and some stupid gags I didn't really like. Um, pretty by the books. Nothing really stand out. So yeah, that's out of the way. Why don't we get into another one now, shall we? We'll get into one of the classics, and this is probably going to shock a lot of you people watching that are huge Pixar fans. Yeah, um, I didn't really like this film as much as everyone else does. I think their other films, their other originals are much better than this. I mean, it's it's good. Like, compared to other animated companies, they, they make a lot of great movies and all, so it's hard to judge when movies are, like, really good compared to other movies that are just meh. But this is Pixar standards, so we gotta take it, you know, like, these are high standards that they've put for themselves, and their good movies are obviously not gonna rank among their great movies. And, I mean, it is kind of shocking, I will say, that this loss to Shrek for the first animated Oscar, yeah, you guys may be like, are you kidding me? You can look it up, it's legit, they really lost. See, there it is, and you can also see how little the Academy cares about anime movies when you see garbage like Shark, <laughs> Shark Tales is nominated, the first car surfs up, like seriously, what the heck? Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, what the? Okay, so time to get on to another one, shall we? Just scroll in here, let's go with Toy Story 2. Now, the Toy Story series is obviously um, really good. Surprisingly, like the first one is what basically put Pixar on the map. It's basically what saved them too because they were Pretty much going under they didn't remake really any movies. They just did little anime shorts and like John Lasseter, I mean, should we talk about me either? <clears throat> and um, Steve Jobs was another factor like he donated he was the one that was donating millions of his own money and all into it because he wanted to see them succeed and all he was really interested with their projects and say what you will about John Lasseter, but he's been here through them all. He's even helped steer Disney animation to where it is. So he was a really prominent figure and with the Toy Story series is no different. How you can make a series, like three films, like just critic wise and just audience wise, adored, adored. Like this is probably the only series that has, I know Rotten Tomatoes and all for being blah, 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 whatever you have to say about them, but all three of them, two of them have 100% and the third one has a 99%. So that means that majority, like almost all the critics loved it. The audience scores, everyone, like fans love it. Lots of Pixar fans really like it. And yeah, this is no exception. This was a really um, entertaining story. It was like a little um, buddy adventure trying to, you know, go after and save Woody once he gets taken away and all. And he starts to learn more about his past and all. And it was kind of, it was really nice. And there were some touching moments in it too. Like all these Pixar movies usually have touching moments. So yeah, this was another really good movie. I'm starting to get into the really good ones here. Okay, let's talk about another one. Finding Nemo. Yep, this is another one of their animated giants that should be in the top discussion. But it's all right. It's really good. Um, usually um, when you have films like this, they just like are really high compared because of their standards. There's like, these are the tent poles that made Pixar Pixar. And I mean, I really liked it and all. I mean, how you're able to animate like this, especially with water, which I hear is one of the most difficult stuff to animate. Must have been really tricky. But it's basically um, a by the book story of, you know, a father looking for a son, except you have Ellen DeGeneres in here as the blue fish who even got her own movie. Speaking of that, why don't we get on to that one now? I thought this was actually better <laughs> than the first one, <laughs> which I know I was like, oh, sequelitis and all. And I mean, it was really decent. It was really enjoyable. The animation, of course, is much better. Um, I just found it much more entertaining. I don't know why. Um, it was pretty much the same story, actually. 
by the titles. They were trying to find Nemo in the first one, and now they're trying to find Dory, except you're focusing more on Dory. Instead of with finding Nemo, you're focusing more on his dad and Dory. But yeah, you learn more about her, questions that you probably didn't even have, but they want to answer them. Made a lot of money, people really liked it. And yeah, they had some, the side characters in this movie I thought were way better than the side characters in that movie. I found it much more entertaining. Okay, now we're starting to get on to the ones that I really, really like. Um, let's go ahead and just, the original one now. You may be like, what the hell? Yeah, um, this is, I lost the slip cover, and so it's, <laughs> yeah, like, it is Toy Story though, it's just I lost the slip cover. And that Toy Story 2, you can see dog bites. That's because you know a decade ago my dog got into it. And it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, of course, the one that started it all, Toy Story, is still a landmark in film, like at least for animation, but you could see lots of filmmakers and all, not just in the animation department, but they've all took a look on what they were able to accomplish, especially back then. And plus, it was a really fun, enjoyable story. And there you go. All right, Ratatouille. I'm pretty sure this is my sister's favorite of the bunch. I'm pretty sure. She'll probably tell you some other time if it is or not. But yeah, um, this was a really enjoyable movie. Like, I mean, it. it's basically um, the story is like you can accomplish whatever you want even if like there's obstacles and all but it's basically about following your dream and that's a really good message like a lot of these movies have good messages and it's really well animated some beautiful music and it actually won the oscar yay so there you go okay let's see here's another one wally my goodness i don't know how they keep doing it see these later ones are much better but with this, you have the first half of the movie basically is like no dialogue. It's just robot and robot like conversation types. I don't know how they're able to do it. It's the, how they made a film so charming, so endearing with just robots is just beyond me. And while the second half isn't as good because, you know, you get the people, a bunch of fatties and all that. <laughs> but and all joking aside, it was still fantastically done movie. I'll go with this one, why not? Inside Out. Um, now, from what I'm aware of, I, I, I think if I'm still right, my buddy, my YouTube fellow comrade, Corey, this is probably his favorite Pixar movie. I don't know if that has changed, cause, but I think it still is. And yeah, I could see why. This was, this was like a triumphant return from Pixar. This was probably their best movie since 2010. We'll get to that movie in a minute. And yeah, it's just, wow, like, Again, I'm, I'm just going to say the animation, fantastic. All the voice work, like in a lot of these movies, they get the voice work top notch, but in here especially, my goodness, the voice work. Of course, got that one that does that, yippee. But yeah, the voice work from everyone was great. It has more of a focus on joy and sadness because they basically, it's another similar story where they get lost, they got to find their way back. See a trend in a lot of these, right? But yeah, it really delves into some really good stuff about um, emotions and all that kind of stuff like especially with the main like like people characters and all they it's not just about them the emotions of the girl like they're in it as well and um they really have some good stuff as well especially with the girl wow and again there's one of the saddest moments in these movies was in here and it was just a really good um emotional movie and like it's just wow their movies are just some of the best in animation. Okay, we're in the top four. So let's get in. Number four. Whew. I'll do it. Their most recent film that I've seen, Coco. Um, from our review, which by the way is my most popular video on here with over 900 views. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, just looking at this list, it's not even close. Like, I truly have to say thank you so much, guys, for watching me. That really makes me so much happier. Thank you. 900 of you, think about this, 900 of you decided to watch me, the cringiest kid on this site, probably, but I mean, again, I'm not just self-praising, but thank you, like, I wasn't, I mean, I was sick in that video, if you can remember, I didn't read, I was sick, that's why Sailor was there to help me out, and you guys still wanted to watch it, either Coco was very popular 
on the internet and all people just want to see every single review or you guys actually came to me and you're like you know what let's watch this kid let's watch this bearded white hair kid but anyways this was a terrific movie i adored every minute of it it has lots of emotional moments in it the animation is terrific the music is just beautiful and even the frozen short the olaf thing in front of it wasn't really like bad everyone hated it i <laughs> mean sailor <laughs> we really liked it um and it was really entertaining there was lots of self-humor jokes and all that in it but again here like just this was just like a masterpiece from pixar it really was like this was one of their best movies and i know it's recent a lot of people probably don't agree and all but how they're able to keep doing original properties like this that's why they need to keep sticking with these because these are some of their best films the sequel ones are always at the bottom up this was a fantastic film who would have thought that you would have an old man as your protagonist make a film this great now not only were the first 10 minutes i believe it's 10 i think first five or 10 minutes not only has that gone down as one of the most saddest awful things to witness beautiful and awful things to witness and not just animation but i think in film in general people know about that and besides that the entire film is really enjoyable really fun has a really good story the villains are really great again the animation but the voice actors are really good like they stick a lot of these voice actors when you think of the movie they stick in your mind and this is no exception and also it has some really good action se sequences which is really good for you know a kids movie and an animated movie but this is pixar we're talking about and even the ending it gets really heartfelt near the end okay we're in the top two now you guys are probably gonna be shocked about well maybe not shocked but a lot of people don't have it as their favorite but why not let's do this number two toy story three now who would have thought they would make a film let alone three of these that were all great and they get better and better this is probably the best one that they've made they probably toy story 4 is probably not gonna be nearly as good as this but you can tell they have a really good passion with the toy story films because their sequels are always the best they're really good and with this story it gave that heartfelt really sad and just emotional send off especially the end this movie has lots of scenes where people are going to cry in the movie i mean i mean it came out in 2010 so obviously i was really young sailors were young we saw it we cried and teared up and all that but it, it's just it really hooks you in and i already think that many anime films can do that and so for them to do it not even their first go this, this is the third time and they're able to do it and you've been invested with these characters and all since they began in 1995 so for this what from what we thought would be the end it was a great movie and all the characters even new ones and all were really entertaining so with all those said why i made the video basically was to prepare for their newest film the incredibles 2 which i've been waiting for for like about 15 years i think when it came out in 2006 i think so maybe 13 whatever so with all that said their best film in my opinion so far is still the incredibles and you know i'm a huge fan of superhero movies i love them like a lot of them and so for of course the pixar to do one was just terrific the the opening the music the characters the villain the action set pieces the the whole message be, being a family it has it all and of course it follows the eyes through the main man himself he's basically going through like a midlife crisis he wants to live through the glory days he gets hooked into a mission his family gets involved it's just a terrific thrill ride of a movie it was fantastic um this is probably the best one that they've ever put out they've come close a couple of times as i've you heard me discuss but yeah this was just really great i hope i really hope that the second one lives up to this or maybe even surpasses it because they really need to start getting some good sequels out there if they're going to keep shoving them down our throats but i'm just glad that they finally made this it might have been a bit too late because it's been a long time but we'll just have to see how it does not just as a film and all but also money wise so those are my thoughts on the pixar movies what do you all think of my thoughts on it i would love to hear what you guys thought of them thank you all for watching and i'll see you later bye